Karen Stark. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me when did you come to the city? Well, I was born here. Mm -hmm. July 16th, 1926. 1926. Okay. And this was in Delaware County? Right. County, Delaware County. Okay. And have you always lived here? Minus one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you remember um, if your parents had always lived in Munson? My dad came here from Kentucky uh, early childhood, say 14 or 15, mm -hmm. and then he went back to his home in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. He married in 1914 and then came back to Muncie to live uh, in 24. And he was here ever since, buried here, 1943. Mm -hmm. um, from what part of Kentucky did your father come? Lancaster. Lancaster, Kentucky. And mother, my mother was from Paint Lick. Paint Lick? Paint Lick, Kentucky. Paint Lick, Kentucky. It's, uh, okay. I think about 35, 40 miles from each other. Mm -hmm. And do you remember, you said he came here in what year? He came here early, in the early teens, mm -hmm. and lived with his cousin. Do you remember his cousin's name? Well, there was Betty Wheeler. Mm -hmm. She had a son named Sam. And uh, the rest of the family, mm -hmm. the Sam Senior. Mm -hmm. And he lived with them when he came here. Yes. Uh, Do you remember the address where they lived? Uh, I believe it was on Gavin. Gavin. That's Gavin. That's the last street in White mm -hmm. Do you remember him telling you anything about how he traveled here? Hmm. My goodness. I don't remember it all then. He came here by train. Mm -hmm. I know in later years he went back and forth in a Model T, which was forever getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you know if he left any relatives of his in Kentucky and if he communicated with them? Oh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. his, uh, his mother. She was there, and his brothers and sisters. In fact, his mother passed in January I was born. Mm -hmm. He had uh, four brothers and one sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one sister passed in 36, and his brothers have passed since. Mm -hmm. In fact, even since my dad passed. Mm -hmm. And the last brother passed uh, about 12, between 12 and 16 years ago. Okay. Um, he married in Kentucky? Yes. And how long after he married before he came here? Ten years. Okay. And he brought with him his wife? And, and uh, five children. Okay. Six children. No. His first two children passed. Uh -huh. One was an eight-month baby. Mm -hmm. Only lived a few days. And the second girl, she was uh, 25 months. Mm -hmm. So there was my oldest sister and uh, three sisters and a brother. Mm -hmm. Can you give me their names? There was Ellen mm -hmm. and Arnett, mm -hmm. Julia, and Anna was a baby. Anna? Anna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you recall uh, your father ever mentioning why he came to Muncie and how he found out about Muncie? Not exactly. Mm -hmm. No more than relatives were here. and. Uh, when you say relatives, you're referring to your cousin? My cousins. Um, mm -hmm. There was a large family, and naturally, uh, as they got older, they moved out and uh, would always come back and bring another one back with them on a visit. Mm -hmm. And Dad was a favorite child of so many people, a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. And of course, when he finally came to Muncie, he was running from the ministry. He thought he'd wake up, he'd be preaching and baptizing the Ohio River and different things. And he thought if he crossed that river, he could get away from religion, but he said it only made it worse. Mm -hmm. And I know he'd always tell us about that. Mm -hmm. What did he expect to find when he came to Muncie? Was he looking for work or just a new place to settle? Or? Well, uh, being a young married man naturally was looking for a, a place to put down grounds for putting and have a home mm -hmm. and better his uh, family life. Mm -hmm. 
and that he found uh, employment. He was a uh, uh, worked at Indiana Steel, which was a made wire, mm-hmm. and he worked there for years. Do you remember what street, the first house that you remember, or do you remember where he moved to, at, or did he always live with his cousins? Oh no, he moved to where I was born. That was your first home? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you remember what your home was like? How many rooms? Well, there was uh, one room that you didn't bother, because it had French doors, and it was kept as uh, what they call the parlor. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> elect, uh, leather sat to you that opened up had a feather mattress. I can remember helping my mother beat the feathers and uh-huh. push them around. And there was a beautiful uh, oval shaped table that she loved. She brought it from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And we still it? have it, mm-hmm. which is a natural antique. Mm-hmm. You still have it? Yes, the table's right. still in the family. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was an imitation fireplace that uh, was in the second room, the mm-hmm. living room, mm-hmm. and my uncle had built a bench mm-hmm. for us little fellows to sit on, and when he pointed to that bench, that was your place to stay if he asked you to move. Do you remember your uncle's name? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. It was Clarence and it was Robert. Did they live here in Muncie? No. They visited. R.H. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the minister, he's still living. In fact, this very moment, he's at a national conference in St. Louis. Yeah. He is, I believe, 82 years old. He's written several books. Robert H. Clarence was a farmer, mm-hmm. and he moved to Marion, which is 35 miles from He passed just three years ago, mm-hmm. my mother's brothers. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a beautiful farm life. I think they were farmers in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So he continued the, his farm life and he would sell a lot of his produce back to Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Did your uncle make a lot of the furniture for you? For no, I remember this uh, bench. Uh-huh. It was a little low bench, real sweet, mm-hmm. and uh, it was made so it fit right inside of this uh, wall mm-hmm. where the imitation fireplace was. Mm-hmm. Do you remember you said that your mother brought that oval table? Did she bring much other furniture when they came, or did they buy furniture? How did they get the furniture? Well, I think she said she brought a sewing machine, mm-hmm. a foot pedal sewing machine, and uh, I guess they brought them in a truck. Mm-hmm. There's so much stuff I'd forgotten, mm-hmm. period. I wasn't even thinking about it at this moment. Mm-hmm. But I think that big oval dining room table, I think she brought it with her also. It's still in the family home. Mm-hmm. Great big dining room table mm-hmm. had leaves in it. And, uh, of course, there was the old uh, buck range cook stove, mm-hmm. uh, coal and wood, mm-hmm. and had a um, water trough to get the water hot, you know, mm-hmm. in fashion. Uh, and of course, the old flat irons that you put on the back of the stove to get to you. Okay. So there were how many rooms? There? Downstairs there was uh, the front living room, and in the living room, a dining room, there was a kitchen. Mm-hmm. And there was um, a room off from the living room that was like, it was supposed to have been a bathroom, mm-hmm. but the plumbing was never put into it, mm-hmm. but it was used as a bathroom. Mm-hmm. Rather, Nine by twelve, nice size room. Mm-hmm. Clothes hung on clothes hung on one side, and when it was washed, you'd hang up in there, you know, mm-hmm. and a separate room. Then there was upstairs, um, two bedrooms upstairs. Can you tell me anything about the neighborhood that you uh, were living in? Well, um, very friendly, mm-hmm. minus one family as time progressed. It was mixed. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lovely white couple behind us, a minister, Frank Collins and his wife. Collins? Collins. Collins. Uh, she was short with hair, I guess, would hang down the middle of her back. Mm-hmm. 
she wore it in a very big bun parted in the front mm -hmm. and he was a very tall good looking man beautiful white hair never seen such white hair mm -hmm. and I'd always admired white hair from that day that knowing him they had a big pear tree in the yard and a garden was fenced in mm -hmm. of course we had a garden and all the trees there my dad planted them and the cherries plum green gauge red purple white and purple grapes mm. uh flowers oh beautiful flowers my did mother loved flowers uh -huh. did your father um purchase this after you yes so he, he purchased it mm. of course back during the depression we lost the home but uh, mm. naturally it was paid and bought for two or three times but yet and still uh, taxes ate up the interest mm -hmm. and uh, there was a flower. I don't even see this flower now. It's called Sweet William. Sweet William. Sweet Williams. Mm -hmm. And it was on the east side of the house. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was your flags, roses, white, yellow, pink, uh, seven sisters, monthly rose, mom had them all. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year she would paint the post mm -hmm. that outlined the property. Mm -hmm. And it looked like a body, a head, then there was a little short neck, and then there was just down for the body. Mm -hmm. And one woman, she's dead in her grave now, bless her memory, Mary, uh, Mary Peck. Peck? Peck, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. There were three sisters, mm -hmm. Georgie, Mary, and Maggie. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they lived below us, just one block, and we would uh, do a run there and swarm of all nature. And mm -hmm. they'd pay us by the pennies, you know, stuff like that. You, just something that would satisfy you and them too. Everybody was poor, but we helped each other. And they had an apple fruit orchard. Mm -hmm. And there was fruit all in the neighborhood and such a like. And one man across the street had honey, uh, honey bees. Mm -hmm. And I don't care for honey today, but uh, these bees were there buzzing all the time. Mm -hmm. And his place was rather scary like because it was bushes. Was he a black person that yes. had the honey? Do you uh -huh. remember his name? Yes, James he was a relative. Just would a he relative. sell furniture? Uh, furniture. Honey? Mm -hmm. Apparently he did because people would come and go and bring jars, quart mm -hmm. jars mm -hmm. and um, then we had a, next door we had a lot, double lot, we had a garden there mm -hmm. and dad raised corn and big pumpkins and squash, even raised uh, cantaloupes small watermelon and uh, our own greens mm -hmm. oh we canned our own food my sister Julie said the mama didn't stop till she had a hundred of everything whoa <laughs> sauerkraut I don't even eat it today because mm -hmm. I hate it <laughs> oh so yeah I. sauerkraut and uh, everything had to be a hundred mm -hmm. green beans greens we had Swiss chard all those different things how much um, lamb was surrounding your house mm -hmm. well we was on a corner lot mm -hmm. But there was these two big lots next door, mm -hmm. and Dad had gardens in different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, work, first, middle, and last name, that's all I know. My kids, that's all I know is work. Mm -hmm. That's all I've done all my life is work, work, work. Mm -hmm. And uh, used to take the red wagon and pull a big old uh, number two or three kit tub to water the garden. Each one of us had a bucket. You'd come back to the tub for a fill up and go down the road. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we did. Each one had their own job. Mm -hmm. So um, when you said he had, your father had gardens all over the place. Did you mean on that lot or no? Uh, different parts of the city. Uh -huh. He Did had you a garden up. Place? Yes, he had one up by. Um, it's now a block from um, what used to be Keener's, a uh, Marhofer's. That's a block down from um, Highway 67. Mm -hmm. Every time I pass by there, I think about uh, walking up there. Uh, planting that garden mm -hmm. and I didn't go to the one up above uh, Indiana Steel mm -hmm. I guess I was too small to go there mm -hmm. but I remember my sisters talking about the garden there uh, did he own this property? no it was, it was rented he rented this yeah, property rented. just for the purpose of raising the garden right, right. Mm -hmm. there was a big old hickory tree in the middle of the garden which was always so fascinating mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, it was really something. We made our own jelly from our fruit, mm -hmm. the cherries, the plums, and everything, and raisins, <coughs> grapes. Mm -hmm. Had to see the grapes. We had grape uh, butter. Mm. I don't even <laughs> care for it. <laughs> he looked a raisin in the eye without feeling bad about it. Uh -huh. Cherries. I saw a cherry tree yesterday, and my mind went back to our cherry tree. Mm -hmm. 
cherries are almost a thing of the past and expensive. I love cherry pies. Mm -hmm. And your father planted all these trees. I planted all those little trees, uh -huh. And when we moved from that home to where we're at now, we planted those trees. I helped my dad plant those trees. And, uh, How long did you stay at um, 1800, was it? 1938. Left there in October. Okay, and from there you moved? That's right. Uh, and what type of house was there? That was a bungalow, they called it. Uh, four rooms downstairs. So we eventually later built on a new kitchen and bathroom and a back room, mm -hmm. which made it uh, six rooms down and two up. Mm -hmm. Three up, there was a bedroom over the porch. Mm -hmm. And of course later the kids started marrying and leaving home and uh, such a lot. But, uh, garden spots there. Mm -hmm. And how long did you stay there? Well, uh, it's still the family home, and of course when I married in uh, 49. You married? Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Okay, um, what was your husband's name? Lonnie. Lonnie? L-N-I-E. L-N-I-E? Two N's. L-N. L-O-N. L-O-N, okay, Lonnie. Okay. Uh, what, let's see, you were recalling some of the neighbors. What were the neighbors like? Well, there was a beautiful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Edwards. Mm -hmm. They had two children. Um, were they black? Yes, they were. Frank Collins was the only one in the immediate block that was white. Frank Collins. And uh, that was the minister? Yes. Mm -hmm. and then Edwards. there was, uh -huh, mm -hmm. there was, uh, Helen and Willard Washington, mm -hmm. uh, Grace and Foster Goatley. G O A T L E Y. Right. Mm -hmm. There was C A Law and Lizzie Law. They were really Law. Law L E W. Uh -huh. <coughs> Very beautiful deacon of Union Baptist Church, charter member there. Is he still? No, he's been deceased by twenty some years now. Mm -hmm. He was from uh, Roanoke, Virginia, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. There was a Myers family that lived next door to them. Meyer? Myers. There's one of them men still living very sick at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, uh, Liza Goatley, which was uh, Foster Goatley's mother. They lived the next block. Ray Armstrong had this family, which was the uh, son-in-law. Mm -hmm. She still lives, Dorothy. They have a shoe shop there on uh, Penn Street. Dorothy Armstrong Dr. still Armstrong. Um, Mrs. Wright, Ida Wright, <coughs> she's a hundred and uh, I think one year old. Mm -hmm. She's in uh, uh, Pleasant, not Pleasant, uh, used to be Faulkner's rest home. Mm -hmm. uh, Bessie Turner is also a uh, residence there at the rest home. Mm -hmm. She was a neighbor. Uh, there was uh, Virgie and uh, Rick Powell. Powell. They had two children that live in Chicago, I believe now. Mm -hmm. Isaac Wingfield and his wife's name was Alice, a very beautiful, spicy woman, had a high shrill voice. Mm -hmm. Blue eyes. <laughs> Very beautiful person. Uh, she has grandchildren still living in the vicinity. Uh, there was one woman, a uh, white lady. Her name was uh, uh, Miss Beck. Everybody was scared of her. They said she was, uh, <laughs> she always wore black. Mm -hmm. And she had the best apples. Uh. Great big old June uh, transparents. Mm -hmm. And boy, she'd guard that. <laughs> apple tree with whatever <laughs> and someone was always darting in out of her yard but uh, she had this big beautiful apple tree. All of these families lived uh, one or two blocks. Mm -hmm. Now across the street there was a Levi family. Mm -hmm. We're still very close friends. That's Clifford and Dora Levi. Are they still living? No, they're both deceased. 
two of their children are. And on the upper corner was the McDonald family. Uh, that was Robert and Minnie. Minnie just passed two years ago. Very beautiful woman. And there was another white family that had a store, uh, just two blocks, neighborhood Penningers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, two children, I believe, were left of that family. Then there was the Weaver family, which was a white family. They had a store also, mm -hmm. neighborhood store. And There was the Fosters, Foster. uh, which is Robert Foster's parents. Mm -hmm. We grew up together, uh, Estella and Robert Foster. And Ms. McDonald's parents, uh, Joshua and uh, Cornelia uh, McDonald. They were in the neighborhood. Then there was the Phillips family. Their daughter still, <coughs> granddaughter still lives. His name was Ted and uh, Emma Phillips. Very beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you tell me what kind of jobs um, people were holding then? Uh, your father and your mother. Your mother wife? didn't work. She was a homemaker. Mm -hmm. She did a. Uh, type of selling, mm -hmm. which was a, uh, sewed dresses, mm -hmm. fashion frock out of Cincinnati <clears throat> later, and then she also had a um, product. What was that name you mentioned? Fashion frocks out of Cincinnati. Fashion frocks? Yes, a very exclusive, uh, very well sold uh, company. Out of Cincinnati? Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they're in existence since the last uh, 10 years maybe. And she sewed dresses for yes, this Yes, they, they would send her the patterns, mm -hmm. and there would be the, the picture of it and the make of the material. Mm -hmm. And there would be orders you'd send back and forth, and you kept part of the, the deposit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how you build up. Uh, and you could keep coupons and turn it in on uh, dresses for yourself, mm -hmm. or else take the money. Mm -hmm. And then she sold a Le Dainty that was toilet articles. Mm -hmm. Orange Blossom Sachet was a beautiful high selling order. You had gardenia and you had your hair pressing, your combs and uh, all those beauty, beauty articles. Mm -hmm. And you said your father worked in Indiana Steel? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. He was there over 25 years. He had a diamond pen. And of course as uh, time went back and forth there was a WPA when the work went down in the Depression. Mm -hmm. He built the lodge there in the McCullough Park. He was one of those that helped build that lodge. Was this during the 20s that the lodge uh, was built? Oh, that's uh, about the early 40s. The lodge is right there right now in the park. But your father helped to build I'll this build. lodge? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What kind of work did you and your husband get? Well, um, my husband, he worked at Chevrolet, first part of our marriage, and then he's been at uh, Delco Anderson for 28 years. And Delco Anderson is what type? It's an auto place. Mm -hmm. Delco mm -hmm. Anderson. Mm -hmm. And yourself? Oh, I've done uh, domestic work. Mm -hmm. At what age did you um, leave your home? Well, I went east with the family I worked for. I would finished high school. My father had passed, and I had this opportunity to either go to California or go to Baltimore. I worked for two different families, and so I chose to go, my mother said, the one that was closest home in Baltimore. I could come home overnight from there, but California would be another story. From Baltimore? Yes, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh yes, you change the train in Indianapolis and change again in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how old were you then? Uh, 19 mm -hmm. when I went there. I stayed a year. The climate was against me. I'm still suffering from it. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful country. I loved it. And uh, I lived, believe it or not, Fort Leonard Wood, Maryland, Army Base. Mm -hmm. I worked for a general. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
his headquarters was in Baltimore, but we lived on 590 English Avenue, <laughs> right across from the great big uh, marking ground. Mm -hmm. I moved there, we went there in June, we drove, took two days, mm -hmm. a daughter and a mother and I, and uh, we went on in the second day, we stayed in Washington, Pennsylvania overnight. Mm -hmm. That was a real experience. Stayed in a black uh, hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, my first real time away from home. And uh, I had a chair, and I don't know what else up at the door. <laughs> <laughs> I went down and had breakfast, and uh, supper that night, mm -hmm. and I saw this great big barge in there. Oh, I never seen him, but it's still huge. Mm -hmm. And I learned the next day that was him. I heard snoring all night. <laughs> Boy, it was really something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but this is what you expect when you leave home. Nothing is the same. And uh, of course, that town is uphill. Mm -hmm. I went out walking, and oh boy, mm -hmm. I can understand why those people had muscles in their legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all uphill. It's all uphill. Oh, do you feel your uh, parents' income at that time was enough to allow them to do what they wanted for themselves and the family? Well, my dad was a person that never went out and came back in empty-handed. Mm -hmm. He fished, he hunted, and then he had his own factory job, and then he had the church. But as far as the church, as money was, that was not uh, anything you could count on. Because Did your father go into the ministry? He was, oh yes, he pastored um, mm -hmm. from 28 till he passed in 43. Where did he? Antioch. He passed it in Antioch. Yeah, he passed it in Antioch. Oh, huh. Which is, um, they have built now a new beautiful church. Mm -hmm. Dad's picture is there in the dining room, Mother's picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd take uh, coal and wood from his own coal crib and take it to the church. Mm -hmm. And he never had a salary. Mm -hmm. He put out a table and I think they split it half and half. Mm -hmm. The church got half, my dad got half. Mm -hmm. but he didn't live off the church. And as I said, my dad fished when he wasn't working, and oh, he loved to fish. Mm -hmm. And the fish weren't biting, the black mustard and greens were somewhere between him and home. Mm -hmm. And in the winter time, uh, there were squirrels and rabbits, and if they weren't out there, there was walnuts. Mm -hmm. He never came home empty-handed. We could always expect dad to bring something like him. And all Saturday night was always a thrill. He always brought in special candies, mm -hmm. bananas, orange slices, lemon drops. He loved lemon drops. And it was a chocolate candy my dad liked. Uh, look, you remind me of a, a fairground mm -hmm. uh, tent top. It had little ridges like you've seen the tent tops, mm -hmm. you know. And it was chocolate. And he loved uh, peppermint sticks. Whorehound candy we got every winter. <laughs> And uh, asafetidine, you probably never heard of asafetidine, and uh, that was a medicine. I have heard of it. Reverend Hutchinson was trying to tell me what that was. Asafetidine, mm -hmm. it was a type of, type of medicine they uh, said you would make a ball and put it around your neck, around your waist, and would ward off uh, germs. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, <laughs> Anybody who knew anybody knew you by your smell because you had acidity on you. Uh -huh. And it was always uh, quite a conversation piece. Mm -hmm. And even today I'll uh, say something about it and you can get a big laugh out of people <laughs> that grew up that way. Mm -hmm. Just like the sugar tit for a baby. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the sugar tit? No, I don't Well, that, that was a um, pacifier. Uh -huh. Uh, usually brown sugar put with butter inside of a cloth and you would tie uh, a big knot in it and, and make sure the the string around the neck was of, uh, of a nature that wouldn't choke you. It was probably a, a piece of rag mm -hmm. and so they could always find this string around your neck and they would tie it and you would put it in your mouth. It wouldn't suck your thing, you suck, you suck your sugar tip. <laughs> Childhood isn't like it used to be. I tell my kids all the time they miss so much. Of
Karen start take one side to there was a, a church that still exists um, the name has changed mm -hmm. but it was Father Boone's church we always called it mm -hmm. and he came in from Indianapolis on the weekend mm -hmm. and then there was uh, other local ministers that were involved and uh, deacons do you recall the names of any of the ministers there? Barton, Elder Barton, he passed over the last 10 years. L.T. Barton. Um, Brother Miller was there. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, I think he was a deacon, Barton, mm -hmm. that was um, involved there. Involved where? At uh, Christ Temp um, Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And Brother Mays. Mays. Uh, Mays. M A Y E S? Yes, I believe his name was uh, Homer. Mm -hmm. And what church was he in? was the same church for the Bones. Okay. And this was during the 20s? Yes, mm -hmm. 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. Now, Schaefer Church was a Methodist. Mm -hmm. It still stands, Schaefer. Mm -hmm. uh, Different ministers there was Reverend Redrick, a great friend of my dad. Redrick? Redrick. R E D R I C K? Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was um, uh, Reverend Earl. Mm -hmm. His widow is still living in Anderson, a very gay woman. Mm -hmm. She's in her 90s. Mm -hmm. Dresses yes. up all the time. Okay. She's a queen of anything. Irvin? Irvin. Irvin. Uh huh, Mrs. Irvin. And she's located in Anderson? Anderson. I ran into her uh, one day last year. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, she remembered me and my dad and the family. Mm -hmm. In late 90s? Yes, she's in her late mm -hmm. And there was um, a Reverend Taylor, of course that was in the early part of the year. His grandchildren still live here in Muncie. Mm -hmm. uh, B.F. Adams, he's deceased. Mm -hmm. My son's uh, father-in-law, uh, and Franklin Jones, he was a minister there. And in later days, there was um, uh, a reverend, uh, uh, Reverend Hook mm -hmm. was a minister there. Um, oh, there have been so many ministers mm -hmm. in and out of there. Mm -hmm. I was particularly interested in the um, earlier ministry. Yes, uh-huh. Um, Reverend Raspberry. Raspberry. Reverend Raspberry. Uh, very good-looking man. Looked like maybe even part Indian. Uh-huh. Uh, Reverend Mayfield. He played the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. I remember him from Marion. Mm -hmm. I used to visit my uncle there. And these are still ministers at Schaefer? Yes, Schaefer. A uh, Union Baptist. Mm -hmm. uh, there was H. L. Buckman, which still lives in Dayton. He's in his late eighties. Buckman. H. L. Buckman. And he still lives in Dayton, Ohio. Uh -huh. He's pastor of St. John Baptist Church in Dayton. Mm -hmm. But he was here at Union during the twenties. Yes, 20s. in the twenties. Okay. And there was uh, Reverend Vernon Davis. Mm -hmm. Reverend E. O. Price. Reverend Mason. M A S O N. Right. Uh, uh, he's deceased. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a later Reverend Featherston. He he was in Anderson just two weeks ago, Carolina Revival. Feathers. Featherston. Where is he now? Uh, he's somewhere down south, Mississippi, I believe. He went back home. Um, Reverend Mac Williams. He was on, his name's on the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. He's deceased, of course, with all his family. Um, Reverend Mallory, he's deceased. Um, and then there's uh, Bethel. That's the oldest black church in uh, Muncie. Mm -hmm. 
their building now. Mm -hmm. Hope to go into their church before Christmas. Mm -hmm. There was Reverend uh, Hildred Saunders. S A U N D E R S. He's a bishop now over this district. He's retired, I believe, and uh, his daughter and I were in school together. Oh. His um, son is deceased. Can you tell me where he is and where the daughter is? The daughter's in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. Her name is Juanita Baker. Juanita Baker in, in Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne. Now, the last I knew, uh, Mr. Sanders in the southern part of Indiana. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which city it is, but it's in the southern part of Indiana, okay. last I knew. Okay. Uh, there was Reverend um, Lowell. Mm -hmm. There was Reverend Gibson also, that's Schaefer. It's not by his name. Okay. Um, you had Reverend. Um, Reverend um, Jones also sh uh, passed in Bethel. He passed in Schaefer and also Bethel. Mm -hmm. We've had several ministers to pass in the two Methodist churches. Okay. Um, what was Reverend Jones's name? F.B. Franklin. Okay. And some of your more recent ministers was um, uh, Reverend Porter. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, President Johnson is deceased. Mm -hmm. He was at uh, Schaefer and also Bethel. He passed uh, last year in uh, in Cookmore, he was. Mm -hmm. And um, of course now you have Reverend uh, Hickey mm -hmm. of Ohio. This is from the Florida. Hickey. Okay, um, Calvary, mm -hmm. that's my church. Uh -huh. The minister there in 26 was William Z. Thomas. His daughter still lives. She's not well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lillian Thomas. Lillian? Lillian. Is she in Monty? Yes. She lives there in uh, 1118 or 1120 East Jackson upstairs apartment. After him, he passed in 43 or 44. Mm -hmm. There was Reverend uh, S.C. Richards, he's deceased also. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Utterback is deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, L.B. Jenkins is now deceased. Um, then there was Reverend uh, G.R. Wilkins, he's in Indianapolis. Okay. And there's Reverend uh, A. Claude Watkins. And our present pastor, which will be installed this fifth Sunday, is Shelton. Billy Shelton. Uh, Trinity Methodist, they have a new home place now as of the last uh, 10 or 15 years. It used to be at uh, 911 North, uh, 911 East uh, First Street. Mm -hmm. They've had some very beautiful ministers there with lovely children. With the Reverend um, Greenwich. Greenwich. He was there for years. There was the Reverend um, uh, Thompson was there, associate minister. Reverend Lester. Um, Reverend Williams has been there, I guess, the last 20 years. J.C. Williams. It was his ministry. They had uh, purchased a new church where they're at now on mm -hmm. South Hathaway. Mm -hmm. So you have Mount Zion, which is over on uh, 820 South Penn. That was used to be called Tabernacle. It was then on Grand Street. And with the pastor, he's uh, Reverend J.K. Love, which is still living. He's not pastor, he's retired. J.K. Julius K. Love. Love. Uh -huh. L-O-V-E. He's a great friend of my father's. 
Um, where is he living at? He's living on um, the 900 block of uh, South Beacon. He's been very ill. And um, some of the ministers there, which is now the church is called Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. But it was Tabernacle? It's called Tabernacle years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And um, one of their deacons is very ill now, Henry Stratton. That church years and years. Stratton, it's Stratton, Stratton. A T T O N? Yes, Henry Stratton. His wife's name's Pearl. And uh, some of their ministers, uh, A. J. Owens, he's deceased. And um, the present minister, Reverend uh, James Hill. I think he's been there uh, 12 or 14 years now. I've known all those ministers. There's several new small churches in town. We have uh, New Liberty, which is Reverend Otis Miller now. We've had uh, um, about three of the pastors. Uh, new Hope has uh, gone to the And then there's um, Good Samaritan. Now, can you tell me some of the um, kinds of uh, groups or persons within the church that um, helped the black community and some of the things that they did during the 20s? Well, there was Dr. A. Wayne Brooks. He's a deceased dentist. Mm -hmm. Was very influential with the uh, boys. He was never given the proper credit that he was due, but uh, mm -hmm. too bad. How did you work with him? He was the uh, secretary of the Y for years, mm -hmm. Madison Street branch. Mm -hmm. They always had everything separate, black this and black the other. Mm -hmm. What other types of things we segregated then? Everything, swimming pools, you swim in the mock stone quarry. We swam where? In the mock stone quarry. Where is that? Well, it's a whole lot there on the east side of town. Uh -huh. <laughs> the muck stone. Muck stone quarry. Uh -huh. My dad said there was a whole train out there. That's how deep it is. Mm. The train that fell off of the track out there is buried. That's what my dad said. Mm. And you swim in the river and uh, something like that. Of course, I never was a fish to go in the water myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I dry line and go. Did you go to um, any theaters or were there any restaurants, that type of thing? Yeah, you had eight seats in the Strand. You could sit in, roped off. Eight seats eight in the seats. Strand? Yes, the Strand Theater. But Strand Theater is no longer. Mm -hmm. You had the upstairs back third of the Hoosier or the Uptown Theater, which is no more. Of course, the Uptown Theater is now Civic Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Hoosier, one of the theaters. The Rivley still exists. Rivley? Rivley. Rivley. There at uh, Mulberry and Adam. You sit upstairs there. And uh, there was um, five theaters. Uh, Uptown. That was a rattle. I never was in up, uh, the Liberty. Liberty. Liberty Theater. Mm -hmm. That was on South Walnut. Strictly low class, poor white ones there apparently, because mm -hmm. it was down that part of town. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, even as late as the fifties, we still had eight seats to sit in there to the mm -hmm. Did um, blacks that went there abide by these codes? You had no choice apparently because they guided you there. And there you parked yourself. They unhooked the chain and put you in there, and you stay there till the show's over. They unhooked you and you got out. Did many blacks go to theaters? Well, I guess a lot of your dates were there. Mm -hmm. Four couples, that's about eight seats, huh? And then the shows were two, two and a half hours long. And we went after work or after school. She didn't play hooky, but that was not my bag. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Where would you go? Well, 
if you no, um, you said you went after school, where would you go? What you type went? of places would were available for um, young people to go to? Where could Nothing. They go? Mm-hmm. Well, what did they do for <laughs> entertainment or social? For myself, you was do at home at a certain time. <laughs> your entertainment was done at home. Uh-huh. Under the supervision of your family, right there on the front porch, what little entertainment was done, mm-hmm. and um, you didn't go nowhere. You went to school and back home, and church and back home. Mm-hmm. If you had a job, you went from school to job and then home. Were there any social clubs then that you remember? Um, you had to be a certain age to get into them, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a place called Gypsy Tea Room. Mm-hmm which was in White Lace. Mrs. Elnora Beatty ran that. That was back in C.C. Kemp days, uh, early 40s, mm-hmm. and before the war really broke out. And you had a couple little small restaurants in town. Mm-hmm. There was a Second Street uh, restaurant. It was owned by the Church of God in Christ. So you went there and ate. There was no partying. The Church of God in Christ owned the restaurant? Yes. That was uh, on Bishop, which street? That was on Second Street, and that church was Christ Temple, which was uh, Bishop Bishop Oscar Sanders. He's deceased now, mm-hmm. and that was uh, known for their fish sandwiches there, mm-hmm. and there were several tables you could sit down at. Most of you got your stuff and took it home with you, mm-hmm. but. Um, there was a front restaurant, and then there was a back dance room. Of course, you had to be a certain age to get back to the dance hall. Mm-hmm. And that was there at the corner of Highland. It was called Highland Cafe. Was this owned by Black Song? Yes, Clyde Beatty. And that was his wife that had the 52, Elmore mm-hmm. Beatty. Mm-hmm. They had the home on one side and the restaurant on the other. Mm-hmm. And um, then you had a skating mm-hmm. rink. In the 20s, you had a skating rink? Called Gibson's. Mm-hmm. And the blacks, I think, had one night, I think it was Thursday night. Mm-hmm. I didn't go. And of course, it was way out on the south east of town, and there was one bus that ran out there. Mm-hmm. And it was dark and dreary, didn't have many cars, mm-hmm. and some bicycles out there. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was such a off, off and out of the way place that. By the time you got out there, you were too tired to escape. Mm-hmm. It was time to leave and everything else. So uh, I went there a few times. Okay. Were there many places that um, you blacks could go, but only on a, se- on a certain day? Well, you had the skating rink, and there was a skating rink out at Yorktown. Mm-hmm. That's between here and Anderson. I remember going there, I think, a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, the swimming pools was off limits. You had Jackson Park, mm-hmm. which is uh, where the boys' uh, Y is at now, between 2nd and 3rd off of Madison. Mm-hmm. And um, if you lived in Whiteley, you didn't stay on this side of town after dark because it was dangerous. Mm-hmm. So you didn't do much coming across town. Mm-hmm. So you went to McCullough Park in Whiteley. Mm-hmm. And you stayed your limits and you stayed on the colored side. The ballpark had the white side, which the road divides. You had the bears and uh, the flies, mm-hmm. and that was it. When you said it was dangerous, how was it dangerous for that? Well, uh, overtown Negroes didn't care for white, for white Negroes. Negroes. So if you didn't talk to their girls or their boys, if you got out of town for it was dark. <laughs> and a lot of fights had uh, occurred because of. Uh, crossing the water line. Mm-hmm. And that still exists in so many areas mm-hmm. and prejudice amongst themselves. Mm-hmm. Were there any um, incidents that you remember, any violence against blacks that you remember? In the early days? Mm-hmm. Uh, what little disturbances came about was through different jobs mm-hmm. and uh, in your political fields, 
he had a lot of disturbances against uh, promises that were made that were not kept and uh, they often backfired in different ways either the days of the polling some had been uh, apprehended because of uh, some minor conversation things that were said to have been done mm -hmm. but um, basically your resentment was a kind of a smothered mm -hmm. thing you didn't go places at a certain time and uh, you just stayed away from territory mm -hmm. uh, one part of town they said it was called shed town a poor very poor section of uh, and they still say that they don't have some they still have dirt floors. I haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. Shed Town. Shed Town. That is uh, out from the cemetery. Which cemetery? Uh, Beach Grove. Mm -hmm. That is in your uh, southwest part of town. Mm -hmm. Back in there during the, throughout the factories. You have Chevrolet over there and Warner Gear. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually said that there were homes that do not have floors. And I do not know, but uh, black looking. No, all white. All white. It's all white out in there. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your family's life like during the depression? Well, by having our own gardens and having our own fruit trees, mm -hmm. um, we always had plenty to eat. Mm -hmm. It may not have been what we needed, mm -hmm. but there was always plenty of food because my dad was that type of person. He helped, uh, he did odd jobs besides his regular work. And, uh, well, he would help, um, uh, his cousin had a chicken place. Mm -hmm. And he'd go help clean chickens. Who was this? That was, um, Arthur. Arthur. And my dad was first cousin. And what kind of chicken was it? Did he uh, raise? Huh? Did he raise chickens? No, he sold chickens. He sold chickens. Chicken dinners and chicken dinners. Uh, okay. And sandwiches. Do you remember where this was located? The corner of uh, seven. Mm -hmm. uh, no, six and um, and um, blind. Blind. Six and blind. Was that from his house? Or yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was, uh, I think he just had two bedrooms in his home. The rest of it was dining room and kitchen mm -hmm. and cleaning areas. Mm -hmm. And Dad would bring home buckets of uh, chicken necks and fat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd boil them and fry them, or else we would batter them in flour and uh, have our delicacies, make clean off the chicken and have chicken salad. And mm -hmm. a lot of ways you can do uh, the meat <laughs> once you get it. And chicken and noodles, chicken and dumplings, chicken straight out. Yes, and uh, he helped uh, people clean hogs. I could hear them squealing now, getting their heads and busted in. And he'd bring home uh, different parts of the hog. So when you don't mind getting your hands dirty, honest work, period, it's really something, the thing that you don't have to go hungry or such a life. He worked the coal yard, he'd bring home extra coal and mm -hmm. such a like. Was and your family ever helped by any uh, government programs? Um, basically, no. Of course, uh, we used to have the stamp program, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, by having a large family, we always had more stamps than we had money. Mm -hmm. And there would be money swapped for stamps. People would come to us and buy stamps, and uh, they'd come and buy some of our vegetables for as they go. Well, they didn't steal when we had our backs turned. You mentioned earlier that you lost your house during the depression. What yeah. happened? Taxes over over ate it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what were some of your most memorable experiences during the depression? Oh, we used to have um, a lot of church socials in our home. Uh, being a minister's family, the house was always open to anybody, any and everything. 
and they used to have a pulling taffy. I remember pulling taffy. Mm -hmm. Making fudge. Uh, sewing quilts. That was a big thing of the church. Mm -hmm. Spelling bees. We used to have a lemon cutting was always, always a lot of fun. Lemon cutting? Lemon cuttings. Mm -hmm. You bring a lemon mm -hmm. and um, and they would slice it and count the seeds. Mm -hmm. And you'd pay much per seed. Pay some, some little money on it per seed. Mm -hmm. And then you would put all these lemons into a great big old stone crock and you would have the best lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> some would bring cakes, you know, and you'd have uh, cake and lemonade. That was the end of the party. So took these lemons and made this big, beautiful, strong lemonade. I love lemonade today. And they used to have all kinds of socials, ice cream socials. Mother used to make her ice cream. Oh boy, did she love to make ice cream. Homemade ice cream. Sherbets had her own freezer and a group of ice cream nearly, practically every weekend. Mm -hmm. You see my mom now, she used to have an egg platter. And she'd whip up her eggs and she had an old wire whip. And she'd whip up her eggs for the egg mixture. But um, there used to be a lot of church socials and uh, church picnics. We'd go out on the riverbank and fish part of the time. We'd play part of the time. What river? White River. We used to go below Yorktown, mm -hmm. a place there, and they'd been to the park in Marion mm -hmm. on the Masinowo River. Mm -hmm. And they used to go to Modoc. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, that's out uh, east. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any names of uh, women's groups or men's groups or children's groups that started in the churches? Well, you had, uh, there was your Starlight Band, which was a junior missionary uh, auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Is this from um, Calvary? Well, uh, I think of one from Calvary. Starlight Band. Yes. Junior Missionaries. Uh, that's a, that is a child missionary mm -hmm. group. Of course, you had the three levels. You had the Starlight Band and Shepherd Boys League, which was 12 and under. Che which boys? Shepherd Boys. Shepherd Boys League. Mm -hmm. The girls were Starlight Band and boys called Shepherd Boys League. Mm -hmm. At that time, Lula Douglas was our uh, supervisor. Lula Douglas. Uh -huh. Her husband was named Nelson. A beautiful baritone voice, very lovable couple. Mm -hmm. He sang in the Washington courts. What's this the place for? Mm -hmm. They lived on 8th Street, right across from Ball Brothers. Mm -hmm. and once a year, we'd have a picnic and go out to her place and. Uh, She'd had balloons and the bus and had the whole yard to play in. Mm -hmm. And uh, such a life. Then there was always the Halloween parties you would go to, dress up in masks. Mm -hmm. What kind what did you make your costumes and things out of then and what would you go <laughs> at? Whatever you could get hold of, the sisters or your brothers, your mother's clothes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'd make your faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, such a life. Um, did the depression affect your educational opportunities? I finished high school as well as did my brothers and sisters. Okay. This was, was um, Longfellow? No, yeah, Longfellow on Central McKinley High. McKinley High? Yeah. Where McKinley. was McKinley High? It still is uh, on Walnut Street. Okay, is this all one school? Or? Uh, McKinley and Field House are the same as one. So many uh, studies within one building, and your your physical education is in the field house, mm -hmm. but your other studies was in McKinley. Mm -hmm. And at that time, McKinley was on uh, um, Mulberry Street, mm -hmm. which is now a um, part of the school program of another nature. Mm -hmm. And they built the new McKinley High, which is now on Walnut. And of course now you have um, Central High Street now. Central High School mm -hmm. is now in the same uh, countdown. Mm -hmm. It used to be uptown. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, how would you describe the school that you remember? Um, starting with grade school on up, how large were they and how many classes? At one time they said Longfellow went to twelfth grade. Longfellow went to twelfth grade. Yeah, one school. But I went to the seventh grade there myself. Uh -huh. From first to seventh grade, first Longfellow. To seventh and Longfellow. And where was this? Um, Highland at the Broadway. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred Broadway. Mm -hmm. I guess it's eleven hundred. Okay. Where the Roy Bewley Center is right now, the very same grounds. Okay. And from long where I went to McKinley. Mm -hmm. McKinley. Uh, and at that time, it was going through twelfth grade. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. How many grades? Uh, it was seventh, eighth, and ninth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you went to Central. And then you went to Central. Tenth through twelfth. Do you remember um, any black teachers at all when you were coming up? There were none. There were none. Mm -hmm. But I did have a woman that uh, I still use her experience. Mm -hmm. She was involved with the WPA to my knowledge and she taught music. Mm -hmm. And we would have music on um, Thursday, I believe it was, after school at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And, when you uh, say music, piano? Yes, mm -hmm. he taught piano. Mm -hmm. And I believe her name was um, uh, I think she was a farmer's wife. She went west. But she would come out and teach music. And of course uh, my sister played and uh, so I, I was about eight, nine years old when I got started at school. Mm -hmm. And then went on from there in that class. There used to be a Phyllis uh, um, Sweetly Club Sweetly. from the YW. Uh -huh. And they would come out uh, either Wednesday, mm -hmm. Girl Reserve. You know, uh, Girl Reserve? Uh huh. And they would come out. Both of these were from the Y? Uh, one was WPA, I believe. And the other was from the Y. What Phyllis exactly Sweetly, is WPA? Work, uh, you're right. It's a government. Uh, Workmen's people. Work, work progress. Administration. Something like that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would work, and uh, my sister, I think, used to make six dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And you got your food. She worked in the cafeteria at Central. Mm -hmm. And that's how she got into big uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. She still goes into big cooking. Did you remember this teacher, the music teacher's name? I was trying to think. Um, I'll, I'll come to me as soon as you leave. Okay, write it down. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there was a student teacher, if I remember right, her name was Paige. Mm -hmm. And she was from Lynchburg, Virginia. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. A very pretty brown doll. Mm -hmm. And she was a student teacher? She was a student teacher, mm -hmm. Ms. Paige. Were there any black uh, administrators, principals? No, or nothing. Mm -hmm. Bob Foster wasn't even born, then he come forth to be the first one. Mm -hmm. okay. There was uh, Geraldine Finley. She was involved. She was a Ball State student. Mm -hmm. and later, years later, she mm -hmm. became the first black teacher. Okay. How would you describe the relationships among blacks as you were growing up? Just like it is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you got it, you kept it, and uh, families were a um, type thing that, uh, just like now, some families are close and some aren't. Mm -hmm. If you were too close, they made you feel like you were a snob, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But some families are going to be close regardless, some are going to be apart. And you always had your broken home, you always will have one. Do you remember any particular experiences you had involving um, white people that stand out? Mm. A couple of teachers that uh, I wouldn't care a thing for. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why I never went into teaching because of a couple of teachers. <laughs> what did they do? Well, 
you sit in the back or you sit up in front. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one teacher that, uh, his name was James Yates. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't come to, you didn't ever miss school. There was no excuse to miss school. Mm -hmm. Holding your shoes, that was no excuse. You came, you put cardboard in, you came on the school. So he was a real strict uh, disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would often uh, bums down on so many kids. And he'd get all red face. <laughs> he was short and uh, about as wide as he was tall. Mm -hmm. And he wore a little Abner shoes. I heard these shoes for 10 years. <laughs> Because he walked with back and forth in the room and from the bus car to the up the steps. <laughs> I've had these shoes for ten years. Don't need to move them back. <laughs> and boy, he was a, really something else. Mm -hmm. And then there was another teacher that uh, is still around. Mm -hmm. And all you gotta do is call her. Boy, she'll be her feet getting to you. But she was a very strict uh, person, mm -hmm. and uh, she meant well. But I guess those times you were limited to express yourself. So she kept it undercover. But later in life she has come forth and uh, someone really thought her to be perfect. Do you feel that the teachers gave uh, referential treatment to white children? Not only white, if you were high yellow, you had a preference. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of high yellows. Mm -hmm. How do blacks smart. feel about um, fair-skinned blacks? like we do now. <laughs> and uh, it's just one of those things. And if you dress extra nice, uh, they put you in a class to yourself. Put you in a class? A different class? Uh, they felt as though you were uh -huh. above okay. you. But uh, if you had long hair, it was something different. <laughs> no different today. Well, I've uh, enjoyed talking with you, and I, one last question. Do you think you might have any uh, memoirs, any old photographs, newspaper clippings, anything that you might have saved from the period during the 20s that we might be able to take and get copies of? Well, um, I'd have to look for them.